Hello, I'm Sam Aldar, and in this video series, we'll be looking at Altium's Constraint Manager. Altium has updated Constraint Manager and introduced new features to it, making it more powerful and able to handle more complicated designs. And so in this video series, we'll be, we will be first of all covering some of the basics of how to use Constraint Manager and also showcasing these new features. Now for this video series, we'll be using this project, which is a one kilowatt, 400 volt brushless DC motor driver. This project contains a large number of constraints that we need to set correctly to ensure that our design is done properly and routed correctly and safely as well. Now, as you can see in this design, I have three phases. Um, they're each running at 400 volt to drive a three phase motor. Each phase consists of a half bridge and I have here on my right side all the high voltage areas and on the left side all the low voltage areas here. Now for the constraints that we need to set here are the clearances and creepage distances between the individual phases and also we have low voltage high speed data and analog signals on the left side and we need to also set constraint for those to ensure we have good routing and good signal integrity. And also in this design, one very important feature is galvanic isolation, which runs, which separates the low voltage side from the high voltage side. And so we need to set the constraints, uh, specifically creepage distances for, uh, for this isolation barrier. So first of all, we would like to define the clearance constraints for our design. Now here in this uh, top level schematic, I've done it, I've drawn it in such a way that I have my high voltage nets on the right side and the low voltage analog nets on the left side. And I've marked the isolation barrier here uh, that goes, that splits the two circuits. Now, first of all, in this design, we have a 400 volts DC bus coming in, which feeds the individual three phases. This goes into this block here. So let's jump in into this block and this is essentially uh, very simple, just contains uh, DC decoupling capacitors and a fuse. And now we can demonstrate the first uh, new feature for Constraint Manager, and that is using directives to define net classes. So to do that, you can go to Place Directives Parameter Set, and you can place it on the net or nets that you want to add to a net class. So this, so this will be my first net class that I would like to define, and this will be my um, high voltage bus positive net class and I will also want to label change the name of the label as well and uh, I also would like to add this net here so just copy and paste the parameter set and I also want to add a second net class for the DC negative um, bus so I'm just going to place my parameter set here but I am going to change this to negative and so now I have defined two net classes the high voltage bus positive and the high voltage bus negative the next set of net classes that we need to define are for the individual phases of the three-phase motor driver. So if we jump in into phase A, essentially this consists of a half bridge uh, circuit uh, using 650 volt GAN devices. Uh, and there's a gate driver which has galvanic isolation that drives the high side and low side. And we have a current sensor and a voltage sensor that measures the uh, voltage uh, at the phase of the motor. And both of those are also isolated. Now. Uh, uh, here, uh, I'd like to define that the net class for phase A, and I've got a large number of nets that I need to add to a net class. So the easy way to do this is to use a blanket parameter set. Uh, and so you go to place, directives, blanket, and you can simply draw a box around the nets that you'd like to add them to a net class, like so. And uh, perhaps we'd want to make this a little bit thicker so I can see it better. And now uh, we've drawn a, a, a blanket, and now we can place a, a parameter set on this blanket and uh, this will be my new net class for phase A. And I also want to add this net here for phase A as well. Uh, and I also want to add all of these nets for the low side MOSFET to the DC to the high voltage uh, negative net class. So again, I can just simply copy this parameters blanket parameter set here, and I can extend it all the way down. Uh, and, and I can add another parameter set here. So I'm just going to copy uh, the HV plus negative parameter set and bring it here. So now I've defined uh, a new net class for phase A, and I've added all these nets for, to the negative high voltage bus, and we can do the same thing for all the other individual phases for phase B and for phase C. And now that we've defined our net classes for the high voltage nets, let's save our 
uh, files for the schematics and let's now start constraint manager go to design constraint manager and here you have three tabs uh, clearances this is where you'll define your clearance matrix your physical tab where you define the physical properties like track widths uh, via styles polygon connects and also here uh, the, the, the electrical tab where you, you define differential pairs and x signals and we will cover those in later in this video series so back to our clearance uh, uh, tab if you hit on refresh now altium has detected all the net classes that we have defined in our design so i'd like to import all of those and now we can start uh, creating our clearance matrix so just uh, hit on add and you can select all of these uh, net classes and add them all at once. And so here, Altium has then used the default uh, clearance value of 0.254 millimeters for uh, the, all the net classes. Now here we can start to make changes. Now, um, I know that in this uh, design, uh, I'd like to have at least 1.5 millimeter clearance between all the individual net classes. That number depends on which uh, standard uh, that you're following uh, for your clearances and, and the pollution degree. But for my design, I know it's 1.5 millimeters. So first of all, for the high voltage bus net, I'd like it to have 1.5 millimeters between it and all the other nets. So I'm gonna type in 1.5 millimeters but I'd like it, it, it to have the default value of 0.254 uh, between uh, the nets that belong to the same net class. So all the nets that belong to, the, to this net class, high voltage bus negative should be 0.254 millimeters. And you can see Altium has also updated some of the entries in the other cells based on what we put here. So uh, the next uh, one is the high voltage Bus positive and sim similar thing. It also needs to be 1.5 millimeters, uh, but also this needs to be back to 0.254 millimeters. And now we can continue to change all of these numbers. You can, in fact, select multiple cells and change them all at once, like so. And now I've defined my clearance matrix for uh, the high voltage net, net. So I can save this now and also, one new feature that has been introduced in Altium is adding comments to uh, to your constraints. So I can now say, for example, this uh, uh, this cell here. Uh, I can add a comment to it and say uh, clearance between HV bus negative and all other nets. Um, and I can say this is my design is pollution degree two, for example. And also uh, on the right side, you have clear clearance settings and you can, uh, in this design, I would like to ignore the pad to pad clearances within the footprint. So then in this particular case, it will use the default value of 0.254 millimeters. Also at the bottom side here, yeah, you can also add more constraints. Uh, if you want, to, you can add constraints for the inner layers and outer layers as well. If you want to, it depends on the level of complexity and the standards that you've, you're following as well. So you have a lot more control to define your clearances now. But in this particular design, I'd like to have my clearances applied to all of the layers uh, that I have. So now to test if these clearances have uh, have been set up correctly, let's go to our PCB design and uh, let's import our changes and you can see here Altium has added uh, all these net classes to our design and to test that we have our clearances set up correctly let's just start routing one net and so let's for example route this net here and you can see now Altium has drawn the clearance boundaries for for this uh, uh, routing of this net if you don't see the clearance boundaries just make sure you have uh, display clearance boundaries turned on and you can choose to reduce uh, the level of uh, that uh, the, you can choose to reduce the clearance display area if you're if you have a machine that is not very powerful or very capable. But as you can see here, I do have my net class uh, works correctly between the DC bus and switch and the phase A. And for example, and also for phase A, it also it's working fine as well. So uh, we so we have our net classes in our clearance matrix uh, defined correctly now. So the, the next step now is to define the creepage constraints. If we go back to our top sheet level, I've marked where I need to have my uh, uh, isolation barriers. So I have basic isolation between all the high voltage net classes and the low voltage side. And I also have functional isolation uh, between 
the individual phases. So we need to define the creepage rules for those. Now, one net class that we have not defined yet is the low voltage net class. So all of these nets in these two blocks, they are low voltage and we need to assign them to their own net class. The best and quickest way to do it is within Constraint Manager itself. So if you go back to Constraint Manager, if you go to the physical tab, and, and you can see here that Altium has listed our net classes that we have already defined and also has put in the right clearance numbers for them as well. And all of these nets here uh, that don't belong to any net class, now we can select all of those and those are now my low voltage net class. So if you right click on them and you can go to classes at selected to class and you can create a new class for them and we will call this low voltage. And so now all of these nets are belong to the low voltage net class and we can go back to our clearance matrix and we can now add the low voltage net class and now we can define our creepage constraint so if we click on this cell between low voltage and high voltage plus negative now you can enable creepage by clicking on this box and you can enter the creepage value that you need. So that depends again on the standard and the pollution degree. And in my case, I'd like it to be double the clearance value, which would be three millimeters here. And I can do the same thing for all the other net classes. So low voltage and high voltage bus positive, also three millimeters. And for these nets as well, between phase A and low voltage, also three millimeters. And now we can test that if our creeper rule has been uh, set up correctly. And let's go back to our PCB and let's also import our changes. And you can see here, Altium has added a new, new voltage uh, class and also has added the creepage distance constraints. And so to test that if our creepage rule is uh, applied correctly, so let's see uh, on the left side here, we have our low voltage uh, components and nets. And if we, for example, we have this low voltage component that makes its way on the other side of the isolation barrier, uh, for example, next to DC plus negative. So, and you can see here that Altium has already highlighted that there's a, a clearance rule violation. But for creepage rule, let's uh, go to our PCB rules and violations panel and let's go to uh, creepage. And if we run this rule, and as you can see here, Altium has detected that there is a creepage violation and a clearance violation between this component and this component here. So we can we can say that our so our creepage rule has been defined correctly as well. Uh, now, a few notes about Constraint Manager, now that we have uh, defined our clearance and creepage rules, if you go back to your schematic and where we placed our parameter sets, um, so if we go back to our first sheet, the input filter, we place these uh, parameter set, these were initially red and now they've turned blue, and that is because they are managed by Constraint Manager. And so, for example, if you like to make changes to the, to the net name, to the uh, net class name, you can do that. Uh, so, for example, if I'd like to, instead of putting the plus sign, I'd like to type this as positive. And you'll see now, because I've got two parameter sets and because they are managed by Constraint Manager, this one is high voltage bus positive, and then you would expect this one to also change automatically to high voltage bus uh, positive. And I'd also like to change this one to high voltage bus negative. And so now if we go back to our Constraint Manager, and if we hit refresh, you'll see now Altium has changed the names of the net classes. One, one other feature as well, um, you'll notice that the name, the label has not changed, has not updated. Uh, we can either do that manually or we can use uh, a formula. So constraint manager net class. And you'll see uh, Altium will then take the name the label will always be equal to the name of the net class. And this is handy when you're copying parameter sets uh, from one sheet to another and you don't have to uh, change the label name ma manually. Also, for this project, you'll notice so far that we've been accessing Constraint Manager from the schematic. Now, you're able to access Constraint Manager also from the PCB. 
and you'll see here now I have two constraint managers. One is linked to the schematic and one is linked to the PCB. And uh, the PCB constraint manager might be perhaps more useful to you uh, if you're always, if you're done with your schematic and you can always create rules and see them applied quickly without having to import changes. But always you need to make sure that you need to sync uh, the two constraints when you're working. Uh, the PCB constraint manager gives you access to more rules and advanced rules. So uh, here in this, you have a new tab, all rules available to you. And this gives you a summary of all the constraints that you've defined. All the constraints that we've defined so far will be under basic rules. And if you want to create advanced rules, uh, you're able to do that as well. If you have uh, uh, advanced formulas and certain constraints that you, you might not be able to achieve with Constraint Manager, you can type them using uh, scripts in uh, as, as an advanced rule. And this is the end of our first video. In the next video, we'll be looking at defining physical constraints using constraint sets and routing differential pairs.